on this episode of Still Loading, Goldfinger. He's the man. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of the Still Loading Podcast. I am your host, Josh Koval, and today on the show, we are bringing back one of my favorite formats. Uh, a couple months ago, like the beginning of this year, I did an episode of the podcast with my friends over at The Taste of Dragons, and we did we played through as much as we could, at least, of a James Bond text adventure. Well, today I have two new friends on the show. We're going to play through a different text adventure. Last one was A View to a Kill. This one is Goldfinger. And with me today to play through Goldfinger are Mel and Chris, a.k.a. Bourbon Brit. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having us on, Josh. Yeah, I'm in a fantastic mood for this. I'm so up for some video games in a completely different format, so very up for this. Thank you guys for coming on. Uh, for those who don't know, Burb is Mel and Brit is Chris. I mean, I guess you could kind of tell since Chris d- is from the UK, you can kind of hear in his voice. Uh, and we're just, you know, East Coasters born and bred and boring. <laughs> uh, I was actually born in the deep south. I'm a Louisiana okay. girl. Yeah, I moved up to the D.C. area two months before Katrina hit. So. Oh, wow. Wow. A transplant. Yeah. Wow. You right before. Holy crap. That's mm-hmm. nuts. What could I mean? It sucks for everyone down there, but lucky timing for you. For you. Yes. Dodged a bullet. <laughs> holy crap. Um, so before we dive into this, let's get it. Let's take the temperature here. Let's see. Like, let's see where you guys all stand. So let's start off with both of you. What are your earliest gaming memories? Uh, so I, uh, Mel, go I ahead guess, first. I guess ladies first then. All right. Um, oh my goodness. I am a board game freak. I love board games. Okay. I mean, earliest memories would be breaking out the hungry, hungry hippos. <laughs> um, and then I will never forget the Christmas where I got my very first Atari, the 2600. Classic. Um, and uh, all of my friends later started getting Nintendos and my Atari went on the fritz. And rather than uh, get a Nintendo, we got the Atari 7800. Okay. Which I still have to this day and still works great. Uh, with loads of games, the E.T. and Pitfall and Kaboom, the um, still love it, still have a great time with it. But yeah, I never really graduated past that. Hey, the, no, no judgment here. Uh, everyone <laughs> has their own gaming journey, and yours just happened to lead down the seventy eight hundred path. Se- wait, seventy two hundred? Uh, I'm blanking on it now. Seventy eight hundred. Seventy eight hundred. Yeah. Okay. All right, Chris. What about you? Uh, I'm a bit more of a nerd, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, Welcome company here. You're within good company. That's what I'm trying to say. That was not a freeze. That's okay. Um, I, the first video game I ever played at a very young age was my um, my godfather's version of Sonic the Hedgehog on what we call the Sega Mega Drive, but it's the Genesis for you guys, right? Yes. Yeah. Mega Drive for over every, literally everywhere else but the US and Canada, it's the Mega Drive. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I played that and I remember having very fond childhood memories of playing that. We then borrowed a friend's Nintendo 64, uh, which was blessed with GoldenEye 64, which is my favorite game of all time, mm. uh, Super Mario 64, and all some fantastic games. And after having such a good game with that system, for that Christmas, my parents bought me a PlayStation 1. Um, so I got a slightly different um, avenue of games on that side, but since then, I've never really stopped, I'm afraid. Uh, I've, I've got quite a few different systems. I mean, obviously, I've got quite big nostalgia for the N64 and the PlayStation 1 era. I mean, those to get like Tomb Raider, Goldeye 64, as I've mentioned, mm. are some of my favorite games. And it's up to the stage now. I, I still, I've got a Switch, I've got a PlayStation 4, I've got all the consoles kind of in between as well. And I just I thoroughly enjoy playing all those sorts of games. Um, yeah, I'd say my favorite game is definitely Goldeye 64. I mean, that's nostalgia is talking massively heavily there. But apart from that, there's platformers, which I really get involved with, uh, first person shooters. Um, I've kind of dice of everything. I've really enjoyed all of it. And yeah, and as Mel knows, um, quite frequently, as opposed to listening to regular music, I'll just put on video game soundtracks. That's one of my favorite different things to do just because I'd love th- those sorts of aspects of it. So video gaming and video game culture is a pretty big thing for me. <laughs> I can't believe I have not had you on sooner than I, because I, I, so 
uh, the way I, I met both of these both of these wonderful people is through Instagram. Mel has an Instagram page, excuse me, called Burb James Burb, and Chris has an Instagram page called British Bond Addict. And it's uh, I found you. Well, I found you, Chris, through Mel. But like I was perusing one day, I forget I I forget how I even found your page, Mel. But I just remember scrolling through Instagram, and all of a sudden I saw a bird. What type of bird do you have? What type of bird is Burb? <laughs> it is a Senegal parrot. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so a parrot dressed up as James Bond. And I'm like, what sort of wizardry is this? I need to see more of this page. And then I clicked on your page. I'm like, all of this is just a parrot dressed up as James Bond. I didn't know I needed this. And now I, I'm, <laughs> it's here. Um, and then uh, obviously seeing Chris's page through yours and like you guys interacting, I'm like, and I seeing all the stuff you would post, Chris, and I'm like, this is, I don't, there's nobody in, I was telling you guys off mic that there's not really anybody in my area who likes James Bond as much as I do. So seeing that you guys had a similar passion, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to start interacting with them more. So that's pretty much the basis for all of this. And with all that said, since we're talking about James Bond, what's, how did you guys both get into it? Since we started off with Mel last time, Chris, let's go with you first. Um, for me personally, my dad is probably been the biggest influence. I mean, every weekend growing up, there was always a Bond film on, and it was always it always be the rotation of his three favorites, which would be Man with the Golden Gun, Diamonds Are Forever, and um, well, probably Goldfinger, which makes this even more appropriate. Um, and it's it kind of always on in the background. Um, so I always had the, I had the invested interest there. Then, of course, as I said, when we borrowed the N sixty four, playing it on a games console was mind blowing to me. I mean, I, I don't think I'd seen Goldfinger at that point because I was still. Well, well, golfing was 97, so I would have been quite young at that point. 95 um, was the movie, 97 was the game, I think. Yeah, 97 was the game. Um, so, yeah. of course, playing that for the first time, kind of, I think that's I think that's probably more responsible than I know for getting me into Bond overall. But it's basically been nonstop since then. I mean, with my dad, who's as, 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 as a big of a nerd as I am, if not more so, I couldn't avoid it. So um, I got into Bond that way, and it's definitely picked up more in the last 10 years or so. Um, definitely, it's kind of taken more... I've taken more proactive steps to get into basically, yeah, Bond fans, like Bond getting fans. involved with the Bond community and whatnot. Yeah, that sort of thing. And yeah, and it's always just been a staple. It's the sort of thing if Dad and I sit down and say like, "Hey, do you want to watch a Bond film?" None of us will ever say no. It's always been, it's always been one of the things. It's been one of the things we share, and it's one of the things I hold quite dear with him. It's it's so it's always positive memories, positive vibes, all that sort of thing. That's really cool. What about you, Mel? So uh, I have. I'm the baby in the family. Um, my sister and brother are 15 and 16 years my elder. I was a late in life baby. For wow. My parents. Okay. Yeah. So um, I was very young and of course looked up to my big, big brother, you know, uh, my earliest memories of him, he was in college. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I will, uh, I feel like kind of like my first, when I, everything with James Bond really clicked is as I mentioned earlier, I was a Louisiana girl. And I remember, um, gosh, my sister and brother uh, were each married at the time and brought their spouses down. And we had this huge uh, Christmas get together. And dad drove to the video store to pick up a, <laughs> a VHS and came back with Live and Let Die. Okay. And I thought just the concept of this spy tooling around the swamps of Louisiana was the coolest thing on the planet to me <laughs> and just fell into it that way. Just start of an early obsession. My very first Bond film in the theater uh, was A View to a Kill. Ooh, um, okay. and I, was, I, was, I was probably too young to be going to the theater, but it was the 80s. <laughs> Who cared? <laughs> the parents didn't care then. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, and thank goodness all of that went over my head because as an adult, when I think back of watching these films with my dad, <laughs> I didn't get half of that. And when I went back and watched <laughs> them all in college, I'm like, oh, I can't believe <laughs> that. Oh, I'm I was mortified. And <laughs> but, uh, but no, I just love it. Um, Back in the 90s, of course, and um, early 2000s, got into some of the James Bond message boards and um, hanging out with fans that way. And then uh, with the pandemic, that was how I fell into Instagram and wanted just a little bit of levity. Uh, so 
as you mentioned, started dressing up my parrot like <laughs> James Bond. Hey man, twenty twenty took it hard on all of us. I don't blame you. <laughs> exactly. And he whistles the James Bond theme and so it just got really what? Yes. That's amazing. Yes, he does. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of videos of him doing it on uh, the Instagram account, so you can check that out. But That's just, pretty fantastic. Just started getting silly with it, having a lot of fun, and um, met uh, our friend Chris uh, Britt through Instagram, and who shares a very similar sense of humor, and that's oh. how bourbon... Brit were born. <laughs> I think. I think. It, I think it started. I, I saw basically a picture of Burb as you say, dressed up like you know, in the tuxedo. And I was like, okay, if you're open, I need to have a picture of this bird because it's awesome. <laughs> and I think we did the um, we did our own gun barrel pose essentially, didn't we? Which was the first one, yeah. and that was <laughs> that got some <laughs> was, uh, that got some incredible reception. After that, it was like, okay, we need to do more of this. <laughs> Now I really want to see though. I really want to see you guys collaborate to create a whole run of like fake bond movie posters so it's like um dr burb uh, <laughs> from russia with burb um burb finger that's <laughs> i was the burb who loved me <laughs> oh that's it that's the thing that's it. it's the the ability with bond because there's been so many films and so much history at this point the ability to you know parrot it parrot e as uh, mel calls it um, to do <laughs> that sort of stuff. Is, yeah there's there's unlimited potential i it's and with as far as i'm aware the only burb fanatic on instagram there's so much potential in one specific area it's brilliant <laughs> What's so great about Bond to, to to what you were saying, Chris, is that like the the franchise has evolved so much. Like, uh, so I was telling my friend Erica, I was staying off mic. Uh, I have a friend who's watching all of them for the first time, and I had was giving her some warnings because, especially in like Goldfinger, when Bond hooks up with Pussy Galore, <laughs> I can't say that name with a straight face. Um, <laughs> even as a kid that scene really kind of like left me a little weirded out because it didn't seem right um and obviously now with hindsight you kind of understand that really is kind of messed up so just kind of giving her warnings on that but what i love about the bond series is how much it's evolved since then like it's like it evolves so much with the times where it's like yeah it had all this kind of problematic stuff back in the 60s when that was more acceptable but as you see the the movie series grow it still feels like bond but it still evolves i don't know i just i think that's why i like the the series so much still is just seeing the evolution of where it started and where it ended it's just it's great um the way i got into bond to kind of close this out before we move on to the game was um back when i was a kid um i'm chris i'm a little bit older than you i'm 32 uh there was my, I remember my parents had, uh, we didn't have cable, but periodically the cable company would be like, we're just going to give you HBO or we're just going to give you Showtime for like, a, for like a month and get one of those premium cable channels. And it was shortly after The World Is Not Enough came out and they had the full movie on unedited and we recorded it right off of that Showtime like uh, pre, uh, uh, sample. And I remember watching it and I the beginning of the movie just blew me away where you know pierce brosnan is james bond and he like it's ridiculous now but you know he takes the 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 beginning of the movie where he pulls off the shades and the the wire the the ropes within the shades to use it as like a, a repel like a like a rope to repel down the side of a building in <laughs> a bank in Spain, and then stuff is blowing up and i was just blown and then the he you know it cuts over to he's at mi6 and then mi6 blows up so he launches out of a dry dock that's for some reason on the third floor of mi6 and <laughs> into, into the thames river and he's like chasing after this person yes and the the whole tie straight yes exactly bit underwater it's yeah. it, it, i was just it blew my little like 12 year old mind i just could yeah. not believe or like 10 or 11 year old mind i was just like what is this and my dad's like oh this is james bond and that's how I fell in love with it. And I remember we would rent movies from our local library because it was cheaper than Blockbuster and any other big rental companies in our area. Um, and I asked my mom, rent me a James Bond movie. And she came back with You Only Live Twice. And at that point, mm. I had no idea like the age of the Bond franchise. Like When she brought that back and Sean Connery as James Bond, I'm like, this isn't Pierce Brosnan. Why does this look so old? 
where where's all the technology where's all the explosions yeah. um and i was just so confused by it and that ever since then that sparked my love of james bond yeah uh yeah it's just it's a it's a fun franchise it's a well, great franchise the, and i i think uh for me it 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 extends beyond bond because especially now living in the dc area it's just spies are cool they're mm-hmm. real life superheroes they put themselves in danger uh the entire espionage aspect i mean this is as kids we play hide and seek growing up and and now as as adults these are people who, who have just, to just sneak keep playing around. they never stop playing they're still hiding <laughs> <laughs> keeping the gaming aspect going here <laughs> i just love your description of just boiling down spy work into just it's just a big game of hide and seek it's just you know that's all they're doing they're not you know like there's no com- there's no country secrets it's just like they just want to have they just want to play hide and seek with each other it's a really cute international <laughs> hide and seek game oh are you in moscow i'm in uh, i'm in london um all right so we're gonna dive into this now so i'm going to let's start up the game uh i will read you guys off the prompt i gave you guys a list of commands that you can choose from a lot of the commands are just simply you know like go north west south or east uh for those listening uh what is probably going to happen is i may have to periodically give some answers because some of these are bizarrely specific not just a simple go north south east or west or open this door or close this door it'll be like look closely at this object and why would you think to add the modifier closely why not just look but whatever so here we are let's dive into this so move number it counts your moves move number zero your brand new silver Aston Martin streaks down a dark alpine road. A glance in the rearview mirror reflects several sets of bright headlights closing in fast. You step on the gas, determined to escape and continue your surveillance of suspected gold smuggler Arik Goldfinger. The aristocratic blonde besides you... <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. Just the description made me laugh. The aristocratic blonde besides you grips your arm as you spin through a turn. Moonlight and fear race across her face. Tilly Masterson out to avenge her sister's death another naive beauty in over her head okay a treacherous hairpin oh sorry a treacherous hairpin turn lies dead ahead to the west you break wrestling the wheel for control the lead mercedes roars its approach one of the koreans inside leans out and takes aim gunfire rakes the dirt uh, rakes the dirt around you but your cool nerves cancels fear you're bond james bond 007 and license to kill this is the game you know best it's time to even the odds and see what this car can do damn you think you to yourself as you reach for the armrest next time i take a car from q branch i really should listen to q <laughs> uh so that's your opening prompt i guess your options here just to kind of give you a little bit of head start is that they point out specifically you know there's a head there's a deadly hairpin turn dead ahead to the west you're having trouble you're a guy is gaining on you and you have uh, your armrest, which you reach for your armrest at the last minute or the, on the last paragraph. So what do you guys want to do? Hmm. Flip, flip the armrest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's flip the armrest. <laughs> the DB five doesn't have sufficient room for flipping. The lead car is gaining ground on you. It's now only 50 meters behind you. Oh no. They want to st- oh, flip oh, the car, not just the armrest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, let's, Hey, let's do this hairpin turn. You ready, Britt? Yeah, let's go for it. Do you want to just me to type west then? For, let's try for... it. Go west. Life is peaceful there. <laughs> <laughs> the road jackknifes here into a treacherous hairpin turn. Black skid marks snake across the tarmac, following the road's edge as it twists back upon itself. An S-curve flows to the east. To the west, the road climbs toward the south pass. Ooh. That's a whole bunch of directions all in yeah. the descent. So do we go east is. or do we go west? Um, do we climb? Up, do we climb up to the pass or do we try? Hmm. Do we try to go east? See, if it was Burb, he would just say, "Let's fly out of here." <laughs> Can I give you guys a suggestion? Of course. Because you were close to it. Open armrest. Oh, open flip. We said okay. Let's try to open the armrest then to get to the gadgets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you open the armrest. It contains the buttons. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> oh, 
that's so, <laughs> that's so not specific. The lead Mercedes has caught up to you. One of the Koreans leans out and fires a shot. Ooh, oh no. We're getting shot at. Oh, oh. All right, I'm going to give... Uh, let me see if this actually helps. Yeah, there's no way that you'd be able to know this. Um, I the, press a button. Press buttons. That we're gonna. Yeah. That's good. It says because this one here's one of those examples of a bizarrely specific command. Press white button. How would you know which button to press? <laughs> there's, it doesn't tell you the colors of them in the description here. Yeah, press that's white um, button. Any colors sticking out to you there? Any colors you think would be cool? <laughs> I know, right? Like just, uh, it's so weird. All right, so. This uh, there is a grinding sound from the back of the DB5. The boot springs open, and 100 razor sharp spikes fall and spark like fireworks on the road behind you. One of the Mercedes tears over the spikes. Its tires are chewed to shreds, and it skids wildly into and through a guardrail, bursting into a ball of flame as it spirals down the mountain mountainside. <laughs> Man, that thing just must have been filled with gasoline. It just got hit with. <laughs> it literally just got a flat tire oh we're gonna you know going like 80 miles an hour but then it just burst into flames um we need we need, we need, a relaxes. We need to say we need to say something cool to to i guess they went out with a bang <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to type that i have i'll read the rest of the description but do you want me to type that they went out with a bang sure <laughs> all right let's Why see not? what happens <laughs> Um, so Tilly relaxes slightly and a taut smile crosses her face for a moment. You speed on toward the South Pass. Channeled between two mountains, the wind howls like a banshee through this narrow southern pass. Great evergreen forests stretch up the mountainsides to sheer rock. The road heads west to an intersection with a major highway. From there, a pair of blinding headlights are moving straight toward you at a high rate of speed. To the east... Uh, to the east, the road comforts, oh, sorry, not comforts, contorts into a hairpin turn while the pa- while a pass road leads north. The lead car ha- now has lost ground. It's more than 100 meters back. Well, no shit. You just went off the, <laughs> the guardrail. Hmm. <laughs> um, so you want me to type in they went out with a bang? <laughs> I want to press more buttons. <laughs> yeah, Do you want to try a different... That? The burb, the, yeah, burb jumps down, starts, the burb jumps down and starts pecking wildly. I can't control it. <laughs> uh, do you want to try another button? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do it. Buttons. See what happens. What yeah. Do. Let me see. What, the... uh, what color? Mm. We're, what we have no these? idea. So well, I, the, you're the choice. You're the one going The walk here through here buttons. doesn't tell me. Sorry, what? But I, say it's, I feel like Burb's one that's going mental with the buttons here. So it's, but I'd say it's Burb's choice which button he picks. They pick, sorry. Well, let's see. Is there a yellow button? We'll find out. It doesn't <laughs> tell me the colors. It literally doesn't tell me anything of the colors. I'm looking at the strategy guide too, like the the walkthrough, which is how we're, I'm trying to like. That way, when it gets to a spot, like I said before, like how would you know to press the white button? I can tell you to press the white button. So, uh, what color did you say again? Uh, let's try yellow because I'm pretty sure if we press a red button, it'll eject Tilly. <laughs> Well, that doesn't help you. You'll have to be more specific about which button you wish to press. The lead Mercedes is gaining ground on you. It's now only 50 meters behind you. So apparently there's no yellow button. Go figure. Okay. Can we just try press button? Or is it going to tell us to be more specific? It's the same thing. You have to be more specific. Oh, press silver button. <laughs> going to drive your listeners crazy. How many colors are you going to go through, Melanie? You have to be more specific about which button you wish to press. <laughs> gunfire. Okay. Now it says the go gunfire the rakes buttons. the ground around you. What do you say, Chris? Do we do we do the hairpin turn? Mm, yeah, good. Let's, let's do the hairpin turn. Let's go for it. All right. The hairpin turn is uh, road the east. Go to the east. Yeah, to so the go east. east. Right. Yeah, go east. As you turn to face your pursuers, a tank like Mercedes flattens the front half of your DB5. Oops. Before you or Tilly can move, you're surrounded by Korean guards. A quick blow to your temple from the steel butt of a guard's sidearm knocks you out cold. You slowly return to the land of the living. Vague voices murmur in the background. As your eyes open, you stay as your eyes open, you try to stand up, but you can only lift your head. You are manacled to a long, narrow table in the middle of a warehouse. Anchored into the high ceiling, a huge laser is light is is light. It's light as bright and relentless as a cyclops eye points right between your legs. That's very specific. Um, 
Goldfinger. Goldfinger is here. <laughs> Goldfinger is a red-faced man with a head too large for his stocky body. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just like the the meanness of that description. Poor or Goldfinger man. Um, oh, that's funny. Uh, carrot colored hair curls sparsely on his scalp and looks like and scalp and like unstoppable lichen everywhere else. Wow. When he looks at you, his bloodshot eyes glint like brass scales, weighing your worth. Okay. Um, I How have we, no idea. Let's what exactly talk. to do here? Well, I mean, we've seen the movie. We know how this goes. We have to talk to Goldfinger. Yes. We're right, going to have to s- use our wits here. Mm, I agree. Give me one, <laughs> one second. Let me see if I can. Okay. Wow, this is so weird. So you do meet Goldfinger later on in this walkthrough, right? And it's it has the exact same last paragraph of the Goldfinger is a red-faced man and he's weighing your worth, but... I don't think you can do what they're telling you to do here because you're tied down. They tell you to kick Goldfinger. Huh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I but it, it's I don't think you're in the same spot. Okay, so I see I see in our list of prompts one of them is get out. Can we just get out? <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting one. Try that. I tried that. It says that's not a viable option. 007. As you lie there, the bright starlight. Red laser light burns through the table between your legs, inches past your knees. All right. Yeah. So in the movie, he talks to them, right? So did you want me to say, like, talk to Goldfinger? Let's try that and see what happens. Okay. Um, Goldfinger, my name has inspired me all my life. Oh, this is him saying, my name has inspired me all my life. Uh, wait, am I missing something? Growing impatient, Goldfinger motions behind him and out of the shadow steps the sinister figure of Oddjob. His steel-rimmed bowler, bowler nestled in the crook of his of his arm of one of one arm if armored tanks could breathe they'd give birth to odd job oh, <laughs> what <laughs> if armored tanks could breed they'd give birth to odd job that's the sentence tanks. <laughs> <laughs> with little steel brimmed hats on them <laughs> I, I just, well you I mentioned can't... kicking i mean i guess a few of the other things we could try we could try unlock here, hold on. Let's see. There's. Why are you trying to kiss gold? <laughs> we'll do it. Let me. <laughs> um, three hundred and fifty pounds of Korean muscle. He stands six feet tall and a yard and a yard wide. His hands are lethal weapons. So are his feet, his elbows, his knees, and sometimes his head. Two Koreans pull a struggling Tilly forward. At a nod from Goldfinger, Oddjob grips the edge of the bowler and with a flick of his wrist spins it in a deadly arc towards Tilly. Her eyes widen in horror just before the bowler strikes, snapping her neck. She crumples to the floor like a puppet whose strings have been cut. Wow. Oh gosh. The description. This like, is. Um, are the we, description's are we reading, making a lot. <laughs> are we reading Fleming or are we playing a text based game? Are, are you, say it's Raymond, you say it's Raymond Benson, right? So he's got. Yeah, a, it's Raymond he's got Benson. Pretty, he's got a, a, a flair for being an author. Goldfinger mutters, she should have stayed in England. Uh, hold on. Let me click back over here. It says more, so can I see more? This isn't uh, looking good for us, Brett. No, this is, um, is this the end of Bourbon Brit? <laughs> oh, we, we would just start over. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is actually, this, not... this is, is this the pre-title sequence where actually it was all a dream? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for some reason, it's not letting me go down. I figured this out once before. I, I, feel just like, I feel like in, in oh, there we go. I got it. Talking is sort of our our way out of these things. The Press red light of the laser continues. The red light of the laser continues its precise slicing of the table until it's only inches from the top of your thigh. I don't know what options you have here. Um, can we unlock? Oh, oh my God! The other walkthrough didn't have this. I have. It literally gives you a whole list of commands that you can use. Huh. Oh, what commands? So oh, it says the command walkthrough only. So it's like it gives you like all the different commands that you can use throughout the game. I don't know if that's part of a, the main, like if that came with the original manual, like are you supposed to figure that out or I don't know. Hmm. Well, what are our choices? Uh, let me see if there's any that we can see right here. Hold on. Um, one of them is woman. Tell me about Goldfinger or woman. Tell me about <laughs> Grand Slam. Can we, can, okay. where's, the, where's the polite, where's the polite uh, text uh, text format? <laughs> I know, right? Um, let me. I'm trying to see if there is like something that will tell you. 
One is just type my golden girls. Okay. There is, there's not, all right. I don't know what else there. It doesn't really have an option to get out of this. So either this might be it. Do you want to try kick or do you want to try something else? Um, uh, kiss. We could try kissing. Oh, actually, we've got kiss. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at flip. Can we do like a judo flip? <laughs> are we on the underestimating Bond skills here? Because let's face it, ob jobs, ob jobs are master in karate, right? So therefore, we should be able to do something in combat. All right, I tried flip Goldfinger. With those manacles around oh, your wrists and ankles, you can barely brink, much less flip. The laser light stops just short of causing uh, complete disaster. Goldfinger um, starts walking toward the door, then pauses. My And this um, is Goldfinger speaking. My associate, Mr. Ling, has informed me of an interesting background, 007. At some point, you may be worth something to me alive, but now I have a plane waiting. My men will make you uncomfortable. Goodbye. He turns, and then he's gone. Several surly guards waste no time in throwing you into a cold, cold hard cell. You lie there, tied up like a turkey, until you are freed during a raid of ARC <laughs> Enterprises by MI6 and the Swiss. The end. Oh, Would you like to play again? <laughs> I can't believe that. Like, that's the thing. I was kind of expecting when you said, okay, we got thrown into a cell. I was like, okay, we just had to, like, basically, you know, just chat our way out of it. Okay, so part one, how not to play Goldfinger with Bourbon Brit. Um, this is this is actually, we, we, we did this deliberately for any of the listeners who wanted to know how not to complete the game. So <laughs> uh, consider, this, consider this a... Uh, Consider this a basic sort of like um, what's the word? Um, a tutorial. What not to do? <laughs> what not to do? <laughs> trying to think of a fancier there's, word. <laughs> there's so much. Like some of the things on here, it says closely look at picture. Like the the list of all the possible ones. Uh, you know, closely look at this. Closely look at plaque. Closely look at plans. Uh, do you have an ingot? <laughs> Is one of the commands. Like do you, you have type an in it as a question. That like must a, be for like a, a gold thing laser, ingot right? type of thing. That must be like a golf thing guess, laser, surely. That's very strange. Right, yeah, but you can like. That's so mm -hmm. wild. So, back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah, Let's no, no we, we're going to try again. Let's go one more, at least one more try. So we have once again. Uh, you're chasing after gold. I'm gonna. I'm not going to reread the whole thing again. Uh, just because it's like four paragraphs long, but it's um, Tilly's with you. You're driving down an alpine road trying to uh, capture, you know, trying to continue your surveillance of Goldfinger, I'm getting, I'm getting um, and you're getting chased <laughs> by Koreans. And so once again, just some of the info, treacherous hairpin turn lies dead ahead to the west. You break wrestle with wheel for control, and uh, you reach for the armrest. So those are the two highlights. Okay. <laughs> Well, I think that let's open the armrest again because that went well the first. Let's time. press. That's incredible. We, what, what we got rid of one of the Mercedes that way. Mm. You open the armrest. It contains the buttons. The lead car is gaining ground on you. Now it's only 50 meters behind you. And just to give you, I'm going to at least, hold on, let me scroll down. I'm going to give you guys this because how else are you supposed to know the different colors? It appears to be besides the white one, which you already know, you have a gray and black one as well. Oh, oh, okay. Hmm. You know, so we did the white one last time. Let's press. What do you say, Chris? Gray or black? Let's go black. Black sounds sinister, right? <laughs> press black button. This a spraying sound comes from the back <gasps> of the DB five. A glance in a glance in your rearview mirror shows an oil slick glistening across the surface of the road. One of the Mercedes hits it, spins like a pinwheel, and smashes through a guard guardrail to the valley below. You speed on toward the hairpin. The road jackknifes here into a treacherous hairpin turn. Black skid marks snake across the tarmac following the road's edge. As it twists back upon itself, an S-curve flows to the east, and it's... Uh, and to the west, the road climbs toward the south pass. The lead Mercedes now has lost ground. It's more than 100 meters back. Okay, well, we know we can't do the hairpin. We'll get caught, so let's yeah. go to the west. Okay. We, we can't say, we can't do the song every single time we pick west, right? <laughs> it's going to get very tiring for the audience. <laughs> Channeled between two mountains, the wind howls like a banshee through this narrow southern pass. Great evergreen forest. I've okay, I've already read all this. To the east, the road contorts into a hairpin turn while the pass road leads north. The lead Mercedes gains ground on you. It's only 50 meters behind you now. So uh, you still have uh, white and silver as, uh, sorry, white and uh, gray as button options. 
If you want to see what the gray one does. It's like, quick question. Can birds see color? Are birds colorblind? <laughs> birds birds can see more color than people. Oh yeah, can. We, we discussed that. I was, wondering, I was wondering if we were seeing a colorblind thing and actually the white is actually yellow, the black was a very deep purple. <laughs> I was wondering if we're just seeing it through Burb's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You just see, you just see Burb just driving a car, like standing on like the top of the <laughs> steering wheel, so that way it just has to stand on either side to turn. Walking wildly. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine, just imagine the confusion in the henchman's face where they catch up to the car and there's just a bird yelling at them. Bird? <laughs> and it's wearing a tuxedo. <laughs> it's Burb, you motherfucker! <laughs> oh my god, that'd be funny. <laughs> uh, so what do you guys want to do you have you can go to uh well the past road leads you could go north it seems like you could also go back to the east i want to hit the can we hit the gray button press gray i'm all about the buttons <laughs> gotta see what q branch has come up with oh shoot i hit the ah oh, shit i hit press gray not press gray button <laughs> All right, let's try it. So they got it right up close to you. Let's see what happens. Clouds of smoke billow from the exhaust pipe, making pea soup of the air behind you. Your pursuers slow down, but only momentarily. The wind quickly dissipates the smoke. Tilly's grip seems to soften on the DB5's dash, and the color begins to return to her knuckles. Your speed, you speed on toward the road pass. Connecting to the south and north passes, the pass road clings to the wind-swept mountainside like a garter on a courtesan's thigh. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, this is getting steamy up in here. Oh, my gosh. Whew. I, need a, I need a fan in here. That is a vivid description of how... A, <laughs> wow. Um, boulders slick with moss line its shoulders. All around you, the Alps tower in frozen grandeur. The lead Mercedes has now fallen back to 50 meters behind you. All right. Well, we know that the white button... We'll drop the silver things. Why don't we? Why don't we hit white button? All right. Get rid of this guy. <laughs> there is a grinding sound from the back of DB five, so it, it pretty much has all that stuff. Um, but it, bursting into a ball of flames, Tilly relaxes slightly. You speed toward the north pass. This northern pass lies between two snow-clad peaks, one of which stands like a sentinel at the head of the valley, guarding the village of Trellix far below. Uh, I don't even know if I said that correctly. The road <laughs> leads toward the road leads east toward a lookout clinging to a steep flank to the steep flank, while the south it winds behind the the other peak. That is very confusing. So let me read that again. This northern pass lies between two snow clad peaks, one of which one of which stands like a sentinel at the head of the valley guarding the village of Trellix far below. The road leads east towards toward a lookout clinging to the steep to the steep flank while to the south it winds behind the other peak to the north the road enters a swiss army base protected by an electric fence ranks of soldiers patrol like clockwork figures around the lone gray building behind the fence the lead car has now lost ground it's more than 100 meters back Ooh. i wonder if you can use some of the buttons again i don't know yeah hmm. going going north seems like we're driving into a trap because <laughs> that sounds like the sort of place we don't want to go. <laughs> Do you want to try to hide behind the peak at the the one that goes to the south? I think we've got enough distance, right? And that's the sort of thing you'd see in the film. You'd see like you'd, the the camera would like blast past the guy. The guys, the bad guys would drive past, and we'd be happy and safe behind something. So I think, yeah, that's yeah, let's do that. South. Yeah. Right behind behind the peak. Oh, we're back here. It literally is the same thing again. We're now captured by Goldfinger. Basically, what? you turned oh, and then you ran, you ran headfirst into oh, another car. I, I thought it was like a, a south slip. Like, we're not very good at this, are we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very this hard. Why, to... This is why parrots make terrible secret agents. Yeah. <laughs> He's parroting our previous moves. Oh, how, Mom, how long till we get there? And Burb just squawks at him. <laughs> yeah, we must. We must have to end up at that uh, base. Well, you also could have gone east as well, because like you, you, you could go south, east, or north. North was to the base. South, I guess you. That actually makes sense because you were heading north, and since you went south, you basically did a U turn and just oh, slammed geez. right into them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, do you want me to restart here so we don't have unless or do you want to try to see if there is a way out of Goldfinger's clutches here? I f- I feel like we we've been in the clutches before. I feel like it's gonna go it's gonna backdraft onto the same thing. I I don't think of anything I would have done differently the last time we were in Goldfinger's clutches. <laughs> we Apart didn't try from, kicking them. We, we didn't try kicking, we didn't try kiss. <laughs> I'll try kiss. Let's give Goldfinger no, a smooch. Let's try kicking them. He's kissing him's just gonna what is seriously. He? Oh, the kick. I don't know. The kick foots you first, then kiss. There you go. <laughs> no, come on. This this game this game was written how long ago? Eighty six. It's also text adventures are notorious because the text parser that like you have to be very specific with your options, and if it doesn't know what words are, then it's just like I don't understand that. This one though, it's, I did try kiss. It says this is no time for kissing, and it says as you lie there, the bright star. A straight red laser ball. <laughs> Try again. Kiss again. Kiss again. Be persistent. That's no, what... come on, kick him. Kick no. him. Well, let's kiss the, with persist... tongue. Let's... <laughs> the laser's moving up to our crotch, Chris. Come we know, on. We know what happens with pussy galore later, and I, those persistent tell them. Let's try a gold finger. Where's he flipping to? Turn him? Oh, we got flip. <laughs> flip into hay bale. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't work. It, it actually just reset. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, oh! I tried gosh. kiss. I tried kiss with tongue, and I tried kick. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, just mm. to kind of recap, let, let, I, let me get back to you real. Let, we can get back to it real quick. So we we're going to open the armrest. So that way the buttons are available. Isn't that nuts? Like you can't just say you know you know, activate smoke screen or something like that. You actually have to yeah. use a command to open the armrest, then use another command to hit a button. Well, we know um, what each one does. We know black is oil, gray is smoke, and white is the uh, metal barbs. So if you'd like, what I can tell you is we can, I can take the, um, I can tell you like what it would like use the guide up to the point that you were at, if you would like. So they actually, I, I don't think it makes a difference The they, they say to use the white button first, but like, I don't think it really makes a difference because it seemed like it was going in the same way. Like each one of those like helps dissipate and turns back one of the cars. Yeah. But I wonder if the smoke screen is only useful prior to the pass because the pass, it says it's windy. So it blows it all away. Hmm. You know? Or like, or like you said, could we go into the uh, compound and then try the gray button to create smoke so that the soldiers, I don't know, can't see us hop out of the car and make a run for it? Yeah. <laughs> so right now we have the open armrest, though. So do you want me to just move up, like get up to that spot again, sort of? Or do you want to try something different? Yeah. Wait, so yeah to what? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, let's go to the... We know the buttons. Let's go... Mm. so right now the options are you can either go the right now your options are because it's the beginning we're still being chased um do you want to go uh oh my god where are you at it's west or north west or north oh and north 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 is the the military base right north is the direction that you want to go because they're coming from the south yeah let's let's do north north. North. we never know the military may be on our side (laughs) what Okay, that doesn't make any sense. It says you can't drive that direction, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay, so let's go west. If that doesn't work, the other option is west. west. <laughs> okay. Goldfinger is not bad. Gold All right, so oh, basically goodness. the lead car is right behind you. The road jackknifes here into a treacherous hairpin turn. Black skid marks snake across the tarmac following the road's edge. As it twists back upon itself, an S-curve flows to the east. To the west, the road climbs towards the south pass. The lead car is still behind you. So the car is like you know right on you. So you're going to want to f- probably figure out something to get rid of it. Um, well, let's let's go ahead. We know the spikes. Let's hit yep. the white button. What do you say? There you go. <laughs> We've had enough practice at this. There you go. Um, the car oh. is gone. Uh, Fantastic. Channel between two mountains. That wind howls like a banshee. Um, this narrow southern pass, great evergreen forest. I've already read all this. The lead car has lost ground. It's more than 100 meters back. To the east, the road contorts into a hairpin turn while the pass road leads north. So you have either north or east you don't want definitely don't want to go south because south south. Is what will kill you. 
Let's and whack the car in reverse. Let's go north. <laughs> Let's, no, hit the brakes. North. Hit the brakes. Put the car in reverse. That will surprise them. They'll never see it coming. <laughs> I know. They'll never see it coming. <laughs> it's exactly you what they didn't expect us to do. <laughs> When we were when and when I did the a view to a kill one, they got the dragons got so lost that and we found our way back somehow. It was it was crazy. They were in, it was in it was in Paris, and I didn't know the game was programmed for this. But they were like four streets over from where they needed to be, so they just they somehow figured out their way to get to the to the, the car they needed because they got the keys to their car, and then they get down and the and the game describes like four different cars. And they all sound like your car. And they're, they're all different Aston Martins, but they're not your Aston Martin. So you have to find the right one. It was really oh, weird. Um, these, these are actually, it's actually tough. Yeah. It is. It's the sort of thing. It's, the issue is it's tough and then having to go, like, having to redo it again. I, that's where the replay value comes in, right? <laughs> I, was, I was going into Blazing and be like, yeah, we'll make a choice and we'll, we'll get a way out of it. No, we need to take consideration with all of these. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Every single, and the, especially the like, games back then, back in like the eighties, like there's no, there. I, I've talked about this with friends before, and I've also talked about it on the podcast before. There's a thing in game design that developers do a lot better now, but it's respecting the player's time. It's like this is not. I, this is fun because we're kind of joking around and everything. But if you're playing this by yourself, you'd be so mad because <laughs> like, it's not respecting your time. You just have to yeah. constantly guess, test, and revise. Yeah. But uh, all right, so you, Mel, you said go north from here. So let's do that. Connecting the south and north passes, the ro- the pass road clings to the windswept mountainside like a garter on a courtesan's thigh. <laughs> Sorry, that's <laughs> I love that again. <laughs> um, boulders slick with moss line its shoulders all around the Alps Tower and a frozen crater. The car- lead car is more than a hundred. Me- is still more than a hundred meters back. More than hundred. Um, so so we're making good time. So it yeah. seems like the only direction now you can go is through. Is hold on, let me just make sure I'm reading this. I Basically, think we have to go just into the keep compound. going north. You, have, yeah. you can only go north. Yeah. So let's try that again. This northern pass lies between snow cl- two snow-clad peaks. I've read this one before. The one is right above the village of Trellix, far below. The other one has a road that leads east, that east towards a lookout, clinging to a steep flank, while to the south it winds behind the other peak you don't want to go south we know this from last time this is pretty much where we're at because then the the road to the north is what enters in the swiss army base so let's do it uh do you you want so you want to so you want to go north then to the swiss army base let's do it i think we've tried our other options yeah let's go north let's, let's do it you can't drive that direction. What oh, I was that? hold on. That's, oh, can we can we use something on the we have to on get that? out of a car? So it says, let me just make sure I'm reading that correctly. To the north, the road enters a Swiss army base. Yeah, so you would think you would go north. So I guess the options are either go east, pretty much go east at that point, because I'll read the whole paragraph again. Northern Pass lies between two snow-clad peaks, one of which stands like a sentinel at the head of a valley guarding the village oh. far below. The road towards the east the road leads east towards a lookout to the steep flank while to the south it winds below the other peak okay, to the north the enters south. so it's either it's either north or east it was your options we tried and north, and, go north. north. So and we, the car is right is now shooting at you like they're right up on you so we can we can do the oil slick yeah uh the, you want to try that one that is i the believe black that's black, black. black. A spraying sound comes back to the DB5. Tilly relaxes slightly. Um, hugging the mountainside, look out. Whoa. It didn't do anything. What? It oh, said, yeah. oil slick glistening across the surface of the road. Tilly relaxes slightly. You speed towards toward lookout road hugging the mountainside lookout road offers a christmas card view of the valley below where a white steeple towers over the neat shops and houses of trellex to the west is the north pass and to the east is a sharp curve the road's southern shoulder widens into a lookout in the ground is a manhole cover okay uh in the ground is a manhole cover the lead car is still close behind you hmm okay i mean We've tried going east the one time and we got caught. We tried going south the one time and we got caught. Does it? Is there any way? Like, should we try just getting out of the car? I also I love that it's like go west to go on the north path. It's like what? 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's very that's thing. Are, we, are we meant to, are we meant to stop at this point? Like just, you know, take them on. Or I'm curious if this is the type of game where no matter what we do, eventually we're going to get caught by Goldfinger and end up strapped to the laser table regardless. It's, um, it's, according to this, no, cause it did not give me an option. Like when I searched for the, this, the, this, the script that we were on where we're stuck on the table, it did not have it was not on the walkthrough, so you don't need oh. to get caught by him. Okay, <laughs> we're just really... The, the thing is that since I only have the walkthrough up, it doesn't have all the different possibilities of places you can go. So when you go there, you're just as lost as I am at that point. So like when we got to Goldfinger, I'm like, well, the strategy guy's got nothing on this. We're on our own. We got to <laughs> yeah. see what we can Best what this luck. boils down to, essentially, is we're really, really bad at hide and seek. We're like the toddler mm-hmm. who, who, like, stands behind the curtain so you can see, like, all of their legs and just nod but, their head, right? I can, definitely hide, be- I can definitely hide behind this lamppost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I can't see them, they can't see me, right? <laughs> just put a pillow on our head. Um, right. In that case, yeah, so, should, we, should we go on to the North Road, hmm. then? Which is west, right? Sure, west, let's try it. West to go north. Let's go north. Because I, I would have thought the military base would be the place we'd go. What? I thought that would have been it. Oh. Well, apparently you can't drive that direction, even though it said you could drive <laughs> that direction. And now we're captured by Goldfinger again. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. This is, this is fantastic. This is such a mind bender. Okay. Okay, so and I don't this, I don't this, want to just give you what the strategy guide said because that no, ruins of course the not. fun. This time, do kick then kiss. All right, <laughs> kick. <laughs> you aren't in very good position to do any kicking as you lie there. The starlight. Um, hold on, let me see. Gosh, speak. Wait, with examine. Gold. How about examine? Examine is one of the prompts. Maybe there's some type of examine restraints. Yeah, I never thought an examine our examine laser. I never thought in our Bond film we wouldn't be able to get past the pre-title sequence. <laughs> no, nope, it doesn't. Yeah, it didn't work. It just kept. I tried kick. I tried kiss. Then I tried examine. You. It seems like you only get three tries, and then all of a sudden it's just like, well, you died. Start over again. Oh, jeez. Gosh, um, that's like the Austin Powers thing. Ask three times, and they'll answer what the question is right. <laughs> <laughs> it's. It's just this is really tough. Like the other one was tough too, but this one is like especially difficult. Um, that's all right. That's all right. Do you want to try one more time? Oh yeah. Try one more time. Let's try one more time. And if there's like if there's like some heavenly guidance that were to rain down, like Bond's instinct or Burb's instinct, we say, and if it took the voice of somebody who's possibly in Philadelphia, that could be quite useful. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) 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 Well, so far, you know, the first thing is open armrest, so we'll always start with that. Says the voice in Philadelphia. Um, and then we have uh, you open the armrest. It contains the buttons. The lead car is getting ground. You is now only fifty meters behind you. We're going to continue going west. And now this one here, the first one it tells you to do is press the white button. So we're going to do the white button because we know that's the the spikes. But what's happening here is the road jackknifes here into a treacherous hairpin turn. Black skid marks snake across the tarmac. Okay, this makes sense now because since it's a hairpin turn. They can't dodge out of the way quickly enough for the spikes, right? So either uh, the spikes okay. or the oil slick would probably be the, the best bet. Yeah, um, right. Lead Mercedes has caught up to you. One of the Koreans leans out and fires a shot. We press the white button. Yes. So I open. Oh, my God. I hit open armrest and it says you still have to open the armrest. <laughs> I just I love that. I'm like, what are you talking task, about? I, task failed successfully. <laughs> I know, right? All right, uh, open armrest. Press white button. White button. There we go. I love the idea that Bond's going through technical difficulties at the moment. <laughs> I know. It's just like Spectre all over again. It's like, God damn it, Q. You. <laughs> you too can be aggravated. By... <laughs> okay, so... Uh, there is grinding sound from the back of the DB5. Hundreds of razor sharp spikes spill all, all across the road like fireworks, or and spark like fireworks. Excuse me, on the road behind you, uh, one of the Mercedes tears over the spikes, and its tires are chewed to shreds, and it skids wildly into the guardrail, bursting into a ball of flame. It's made of gasoline. Uh, you speed toward the south pass, channel between two mountains. The wind howls like a banshee through this. 
uh, narrow southern pass, the great evergreen forests stretch up, blah, blah, blah. To the east, the road contorts into a hairpin turn, which is where you just came from. That makes a lot of sense. See, this is why it's getting confusing. Is because the first command we did was go west. Yeah. And that would lead you right into the hairpin turn. So we do the hairpin turn, and now that we're there, it's telling you to eat to the east is the hairpin turn you just came from, but it doesn't tell oh. you that you just came from it. Okay. So you have to remember which direction you came from. So when it describes something in the opposite direction, you know it's the way you came. That's why we're getting so confused here. So we're we're, we're constantly uh, turning Yui's. Pretty much, we're literally just like we <laughs> just knock somebody off and then. T- did a U we like I got this and then just slam oh, head yeah, for yeah. so if I typed in go east right now most likely we, okay. the game would be over we'd be back in goldfinger's clutches, clutches. so right. the only option here is while well, is to go north the lead Mercedes has now lost ground it's more than 100 meters back so let's okay. go north yeah okay uh, then we have connecting to the south and north passes the pass Road clings to the windswept mountains like a garter on a courtesan side. There we go. Bring back into, it back again. Back this hole. Back <laughs> again. This is like uh, the, 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 that tree in the woods you keep passing over and over when you're lost. We're just, you keep getting back to this courtesan <laughs> side. <laughs> uh, so uh, boulders slick with moss line the sho- line its shoulders all around you. The apps are frozen. The lead car is gaining ground on you. It's now only 50 meters behind you. So that is not really like giving you any straight direction. So it seems like the only you can either try an attack or you could go north. Those are the two options I'm seeing right here. Well, let's let I think we should go north, right? Mm, Yeah, let's try that. Now, north is not where we came from, just to be sure. Yes. And it's also smart because one, because the Philly omnipresent voice thinks it's a good idea, but also (laughs) because uh, it's if you think about it, the like the car is not close enough close to you. Enough. So, like if if you yeah. do a move, if you do something when they're fifty meters back, then it's not going to do anything. Yeah. All right, we've got this now. I was about to say, right, yeah. So let's go after you know just reversing into the bad guys. We've finally got the picture, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> also, I love the idea that like the on the present Philly voice is like liked this message. <laughs> 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 he approves this move. <laughs> Omnipresent Philly voice. OPF. We're just going to, I'll just say OPF. A message from the OPF. We need to consult the um, OPF. So, yeah, if, if you ever want to consult the OPF, just, just ask. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Northern Pass lies between the two snow clad peaks. So, we're back to these snow clad peaks again. You know, one's guarding the valley of the village of Trellix far below. Um, the lead Mercedes has now caught up to you. One of the Koreans leans out and fires a shot. So, this is where the Swiss Army is to the north. Uh, to the north, the road enters a Swiss army base protected by an electric fence, the ranks of soldiers. So it gives you the options of going east towards the lookout, going north towards the army base, which last time we did, we remember it did not work and it says you can't go that way. So it's pretty much just east or you can do an attack. Well, and if he's if he's leaning out to fire a shot, he should be close enough now that we could do our oil slick. Yeah. You, you want to go with oil slick? Let's do, do it. it. That's, I think it went in a straight line, which actually, yeah, that, that's what they do in the film is the car's going in a straight line when they hit the oil slick and inadvertently. Sl- yeah, let's do that. Yeah, oil slick. Go for it. God, I hope this is right. Does the OPF uh, it, suggest any different different choices? Uh, the OPF would have suggested a different choice. Oh, uh, we go east. Let's go east. Go east sounds like a lovely idea this time of year. <laughs> let's go east. All right, let's go east. <laughs> Because it didn't take out, it didn't take out the car. It has that uh, phrase of the hugging the mountainside lookout road offers a again? Christmas card view of the valley below. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not the courtesan thigh. Memory but, is the worst. It's the sort of thing I would have loved to have gone east. Honest, I think I think we we will go to east. Let's do that. All right, let's go east. Here, the road curves its way around the mountainside like a giant sickle, angling steeply down to the south. Lookout road, lookout road forms a straight handle to the west. The lead car remains 50 meters behind you. Um, so let me see. Um, actually, you, what you chose right there, I don't think was bad because they chose something different, <laughs> but it, it had the same thing. We're good. 
we're good we're good guys um so here the yeah here the road curves to the mountainside like a giant sickle angling steeply down to the south um so it seems like you could go south if you want to because you went east last time so just remember don't go west it'll just go right back into them yeah so you could go south um angling steeply down the lead car remains 50 meters behind you okay so close. 50 meters is still too far behind to do anything yeah. So we've got to keep driving OBF can't really help right now. <laughs> uh, OPF, sorry. Uh, let's ask how Tilly's doing. <laughs> yeah, ask, she's she's been along for Tilly. a while now. <laughs> yeah, try kissing her. He'll probably get some more more than yeah. Now's not the time for kissing. All right, I just love uh, the idea that you know the uh, national lampoon where they go around the roundabout like a million times in a row. Yes. I get the feeling we're gonna start doing that at some point. <laughs> I know. Well, we know we can't go west. Can't go so west. Shall we keep? I think, what is it, south is, is our best choice? You have the option of south, let me double check in, south or west. Oh, no, you can't go west because you just you can't came go west because I'll can't go west. So it looks like just south. Yui, which we've learned our lesson, finally. Yes. <laughs> we, we're going south. Where the bad guys are, we need to avoid. <laughs> In that case, the steep yeah. section of the road climbs north to a sharp curve and descends south into a valley. It says south what? Like as a question mark. I don't... Oh my word. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this level of interrogation from a 1986 video game. South? I, I don't... <laughs> I'm very confused with like, what it wants there. Oh, this is great. Would you, you meant to be like, I, and... <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I don't know what to tell you right now. <laughs> like um, this is not. Far. Say put south in caps. Be assertive. <laughs> go south. Can we just? Yeah, go, south? go south. I think the instructions. Oh, uh, says... we're back in Goldfinger's clutches. <laughs> what? How did we do that? The road forks here. One time, I did it south in all caps. The road forks here. One time descends south to the village below, while the se second bends west towards Arik Enterprises. A straight line shoots steeply oh, up the geez. mountainside. The lead Mercedes cuts you off, forcing you to stop, and then it repeats. Well, so here's what I'm going to do real quick, just so we can see. So literally, the the where everything kind of curved off was you went with the oil slick instead of the smoke. Oh, of course. <laughs> so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I love, Why wouldn't it, right? I love this about classic video games, is that the level of impossibility for certain choices. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. It's, so it should mean smoke than oil, right? It should. So it has you open the armrest, it has you going west, and then it has you pressing the white button. So I, I'm literally just kind of going right up to it. Um, then it has you going north. <laughs> uh, then it has you going north again. Well, yeah, what you were talking about was when you were actually playing this, if you did not record down all of your previous answers, I mean, oh, this God. is literally just replaying this game over and over again. North, east, west, this command, this command, this command, in this order. Yeah, it's tr real. It's tr tr well, and this is, this is this person's walkthrough, mind you, like, when I wow. when I was playing with the dragon, when I was playing with the the Taste of Dragons crew, they got lost, but they were able to get back onto the track. Like I was able to catch them back up to where they needed to be, which I thought was really interesting. Like that fact that like you didn't have to follow this guide. This guide was just the most efficient way to get from the beginning of the game yeah. to the end of the game. But you don't need to follow this guy. This guide. Um, so. Can, can we Sorry, finish what you're can, saying. can we use the OPF to take us to the next part of the game just to see what's there? <laughs> yes, yes, okay. that's what that's what I'm doing right now. So the last thing that the lead Mercedes caught up to you, basically, we're back to the place where there there's the the northern pass lies between the two peaks. The village is nearby, and the Swiss Army base is nearby, and we're going towards. Um, the, we're probably going to end up going east towards that clinging steep flank, but they want you to use the gray button here, which is clouds of smoke billow from the exhaust pipe, making pea soup out of the air behind you. You hear the satisfying sizzle of a Mercedes smashing into the electric fence. Oh, that was so the whole th We got that's a satisfying sizzle. This that's time. some superb alliteration. This, uh, <laughs> that was wonderful. I love the fact that right? also, also over there in the States, do you know what a pea super is? What, what pea soup is? Uh, they they said they made they made a pea super out of the air behind. Is that a phrase you guys are aware of? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's oh okay. 
Okay, good. Okay, just checking because otherwise I thought yeah, that would have been the most the confusing was sentence as thick ever. As pea soup. You don't have. Oh, to... you don't. You don't eat pea soup in England. Uh, not. Daily. I don't eat pea soup ever, <laughs> but you know, I know what it is. I just wonder because, because that that phrase by itself sounded like okay. They press the pea soup button. <laughs> yeah, the your, enemy... button, right? <laughs> your enemies drive through somewhat perturbed by your choice of weapon but continue regardless <laughs> <laughs> if burb was driving you would just you know bird burb poop all over them <laughs> that that would come out of the, the oh, oil right. flick there's splat right on the windshield <laughs> oh my god i can't see anymore <laughs> um so the air behind you you hear a satisfying sizzle of a mercedes crash smashing into electric fence so it kind of makes sense but like at the same time why would the oil slick not work couldn't you just use that and it would spin out of control into the electric fence yes! like, i feel like it yeah. would have worked just the same the electric it's fence it's- followed by an even more pleasing sound of a second mercedes turning into scrap metal so that one Oh, geez. That one took out two cars. <laughs> you speed toward lookout. Uh, Tilly relaxes slightly and a taut smile across her face for a moment. You speed toward the lookout road. And then there we go, the hugging mountainside with the Christmas card view of the valley. The remaining car, the remaining car. So that's the key thing. It's not the lead car anymore. There's only one car left. The remaining car has now lost ground and it is 100 meters behind you. Um, this one, the OPF says to go east. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the OPF. <laughs> I, think, I think like Bond has an instinct, right? Bond has, not, has Bond has something on the inside telling him what to do. I think we just discovered that the OPF have actually been there from the very beginning. This is the <laughs> this is the first of the OPF canon. <laughs> uh, what does the F stands for? Omniscient Philly Fella. Yeah, fella. I don't, I, fella. Uh, okay, that, I was Philly like, fella. why did I go with OPF? Because it would be OPV if it was voice. But we're gonna go with fella. We'll go with fella. Yeah. Omniscient <laughs> Philly fella. It's, it's alliterative too. It makes it slightly harder to say, which is what we're what we're, what we're all about. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the remaining car has caught up to. So here, the road curves its way around the mountainside. Uh, okay, thank God it's not the courtesan again. Mountainside, like a giant sickle, angling steeply downhill to the south. Lookout Road forms a straight handle to the west, and then the remaining car has caught up to you. One of the Koreans leans out and fires a gun. So your last one here is your black button, which is the oil slick. Yes. There we go. The spraying sound comes back to the DB5. You glance in the rearview mirror. Shows an oil slick glistening across the surface of the road. The final Mercedes hits it. Spins like a pinwheel and smashes through the guardrail rail to the valley below. Breathing a sigh of relief, you slow down and head toward the, st- the steep road. Tilly sinks to the back of the seat. This steep section of the road climbs north to a sharp curve and descends south into the valley. So that is where then I'll give you one more command here and we can move on because this one, I don't know. How would you know that you you're done driving? This one actually just says open door. So <laughs> How would you know that you're done driving? I don't know. You could have kept on driving and not known anything. Oh, I love that. I love these games. They're fantastic. So open door. You open the DB5's door. What do you think should be now that you're now? I'm going to be very. I can't. I can't believe we did this first try. By the way, due to the miracle of editing, we did this first try. OPF is a is a wonder. It's a praise the OPF. Hallelujah. Um, So (laughs) this is so. I want to remind you that this game makes you uh, give very specific commands. So. You just parked your car and you open the door. What do you think you should do next? Okay, turn off the car. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. Shut, shut door. But the OPF doesn't. But it's not that. Shut door. Let's see. Well, you well you don't want to shut door. You're still in there. Oh, get oh, out of the car! Get, oh no, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, shut the door. I'm still in it. Let's have a little competition. Let's make the car clap. That's what, <laughs> that legit. I was like, uh, that's what it was. I was wow. Yeah. So you get out of the car. So you step out of the DB5 at the steep road, not on it, but at the steep road. I don't know why it says that. Um. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> what do you want to do? You got okay, a now, world of choices. Exactly. Now, is this something where we can get Tilly out? So do we have to open her door to let her out? Or do we just assume she's following behind us? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I mean, Bond's to... a gentleman. He would open the before, passenger door. Before we do 
before we do that, do we want to examine the environment first? Let's have a look at actually just be able to tell what's completely around us. Or should we get her out first? What do you th- what do you think? Actually, Bond Bond would go with the woman first, right? So let's go for Tilly. <laughs> so I will try to say open Tilly Tilly's door. How's that? Yeah, yes, let's try that. It just says the DB5's door is already open. Oh, mm. strong independent woman. She does now let me try one more thing though. I did not put an apostrophe S because I didn't know how if it would handle it. Open Tilly's apostrophe S door uh door. Our survey says. Same thing. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. In that case, uh, can we um, uh, look? This this steep section of the road climbs north to a sharp curve and descends south into the valley. The DB five is here. Hmm. Gosh, I, I guess could... we should go north to the to the pass or to the path. Right. Walk. Walk north. Uh, o- OPF likes that idea. Okay. Oh. <laughs> In that case, I think we should. I, I, that's a fantastic call, Burb. Let's let's walk north. <laughs> You're back at the sharp curve. You see the oil slick. Where? Where? Where oil <laughs> slick? Let's let's roll Do you around. Want me to type there. in look again. Um, I can type in look. I think would it be look or would it be examine? Possibly. Like that's it. Like, before we before we do, before we type this, what what do we think the game's asking us to do, Burb? What what do we think is what what do we think is trying to happen? Because you've walked up here for a reason. Why do we have walked here? I mean, is is the oil slick now just some sort of landmark that we're trying to... I feel like the crazy thing about this game is I almost feel like you should have a sheet of paper in front of you mapping this out where you're going. Yeah. Now, admittedly, though, it is a little bit easier because I can see the text prompts and you guys can't read them. So it's like you're really going in blind on this. I um, if I, I was trying to find a way to share my screen on this site, but it's not really letting me do it. So. I don't think you, I don't think you need to. We've been incredibly successful successful so far. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. Kiss oil wrong. slick. No, kiss oil. Come on, Chris. Let's da, 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 you don't da, da. actually waste your. Between examine and look, should we say examine oil slick? It'd be it'd be examine, surely. You don't usually waste your kisses, 007. <laughs> kiss seven. He doesn't. <laughs> Just. All right. So, do you want me to examine oil slick? Uh, seems like the appropriate um, thing to do, right? The oil slick looks like a black looks as black and slippery as a sheet of ice. Hmm. Oh, I just I guess get, just keep walking then. It, oh um, oh oh wait, we've got to walk around the oil slick because we don't yes. want to slip and fall in the oil slick. Bob uh, falls and is, uh, is immediately oh, captured by Goldfinger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, OPF uh, thinks the oil slick is inconsequential. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> I love that. I love that in, that in this smoke st- screen sure was an inconsequence. I mean this OPF guy is just really helpful. <laughs> I love that in the in this version of Goldfinger, Bond spends it spends a good ten minutes just looking at this oil slick and he's like, Huh, I guess not, and walks on. Like <laughs> tries to kiss it no would have been really No would have been even better though if the beginning of the game was just Bond uh playing cards against Goldfinger, like when you like in the movie where he's like uh reading the moves to Goldfinger after yes. what and whatnot. Like that would have been a lot more interesting. This literally picks it up like midway through the movie. Like the beginning yeah. like, you you have no context as to why you're chasing after Goldfinger. At least in the movie, obviously yeah. you have that context. We it don't pi- have we don't have Jill. We don't we don't get to see her painted gold. Yeah. Mm, maybe mm. all right. Um, so here, let me walked, try look real quick. Let's like. just see. So look seems to be the best idea to get you get, to get your bearings. Here, oh, the road that. curves its its way around the mountainside like a giant sickle, angling steeply downhill to the south. So you just came from the north, right? Yeah, you you came from we the north. We were walking north. You're correct. walking north. We're going look north. at the road don't forms. Want to go south. Yeah. <laughs> so angling steeply down to the south, which is the way you came. Lookout road forms a straight handle to the west. So we want to go west. Yeah, there you go. Life is. I'm getting the hang of this now. (laughs) You're back at Lookout Road. That's all it says. So we're going to do another look because that seems to be the only thing that gives you any type of hint. Look at Uh, hugging the mountainside. Lookout Road offers a Christmas card view. Blah blah. blah. To the west is the North Pass, and you. All right. So to the west is the North Pass, and to the east lies a sharp curve. The road's southern shoulder widens into a lookout, and the ground is. In the ground is a manhole cover. Okay. 
So let's oh. open the hole. So you actually want to go to where it widens into the shoulder where that to get to that manhole cover, okay. which is the south. Travel and to we manhole. want to open the manhole. Or do we want to examine the manhole? Well, here's here's the road's shoulder. Here the road's shoulder widens into a scenic lookout from which to enjoy the now moonlit spectacle of the Alp Alp rimmed valley. An intense red glow emanates from beyond the guardrail at the lookout's edge below is the main factory building of the arc enterprises complex hurrying figures move purposely about the shadowy passage around it south of the factory rise the gold gothic turrets of the goldfinger chateau the lookout exits north nice okay i'm actually going to give you this next one uh i mean opf is going to give you this next one (laughs) because closely wait i just just realized it should be double opf right (laughs) (laughs) you're right it should be double opia (laughs) i love that the double double omnipression silly fellow (laughs) (laughs) this is exactly how i remember goldfinger There's a point. There's a Next point. Time, the, there's a point in the film actually. If you if you play it really slowly before he walks in until he goes double APF. What the fuck am I doing? Ah, okay, cool. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you watch this movie with your dad, you're gonna be like, OPF told him to do that, and you're asking me like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, Who's OPF? Jesus Christ, Chris, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so this one where it is closely look at guardrail, which is one of those ones where it's like, why would you think? to do that the, oh is that the guardrail? Guardrail. what sorry as I, I was wondering this this was the the guardrail moment this is i've been looking forward to yep. that <laughs> this waist high guardrail is formed of finger thick steel cable of a, a finger thick steel cable threaded through stanchions set 10 feet apart one end of the cable has worked nearly free from its mooring oh so do we, we must need the cable. So yeah, something to do with the cable. Oh, then. Um, yeah, we, we've so got a, we've think... got a have we got we've got wrap as a prompt, haven't we? No, we don't. Um... Well, I would think you would want to take out the cable, and then there's this manhole, and then maybe we could use the cable somehow with this manhole. Uh, should we? Should, in that case, should we pull a cable? Pull it out. Can we pull out the cable? OPF oh, thinks it's a good idea to pull the cable. Yes. Let's try that. Um, you tug on the cable and manage to free one end. The cable now hangs over the edge of the lookout. Oh, so we can repel. There we go. Uh, so what do we? I assume if we go, if we just say jump off cliff, we're not going to do anything with the rope. <laughs> so let's. Uh, uh, so we put, you, we put you know what? I'm just going to tell you what the command is because you guys are doing exactly what the game wants you to, but it's guessing the command. It's oh. just down. 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 <laughs> I. I <laughs> that's thing, I, I. I. I wouldn't have guessed down. Yeah. <laughs> Go, I love how we go from closely examine guardrail to down. Down. <laughs> down boy. I, just, I just love the idea as well. Just like he just walks up. He, I love the idea that Bond, James Bond, is like pulls the guardrail, looks at suddenly his brain goes down. <laughs> <laughs> like, jump. I, I love the fact that even in this, like Mel was like, repel. No, down. <laughs> just, just down. I'm going to go There's nothing not more up. to it. <laughs> What's even funnier is that the um, the walkthrough for this it just lists like uh, just single letters, so E for east, N for north, S for south, so on and so forth. So when it just had D, I'm like, it's giving me the D. Oh, it's down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, Bond trips up when the command is D. <laughs> <laughs> He looks at Dingo's okay, so... Dingo, send. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is meant to be a very serious James Bond podcast. No. <laughs> oh my god. This has been great. Um, uh, give me actually one second, guys. My wife just got home. Just want to make sure everything's all good. Of course, no okay. worries. Be right back. Oh, we're going to be recorded too. We can, we can... Okay, so at this point in the podcast, Burb and Britt take a moment to think about the adventures they've been on so far. Britt turns to Burb and says, Burb, it's been an incredible trip. What do you think lays in front of us? Oh, this is the 
been so much fun. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> what makes in fun of us? Uh, I, uh, I find it. I love the sort of um the the real trial by error. <laughs> it's, oh I'm loving it. Oh gosh, I would get. I know uh, Josh was talking about how frustrating you would be. I remember playing games like this back in the day. I don't think I ever got through them. It's just, as you say, I, I imagine you must go into this understanding that you need to make a note. You have no, you must have a notebook and write down every single choice you make. You like that's to. the only way and you can go play back, this. Scratch that out. Okay, go back. And the fact that you've got to go back in, do all of the prompts, and then can you imagine getting that close to the end? And then you oh. get captured try again and then you've got to go back to the beginning type Hmm. all of these commands in well you're 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 you and you and as you said you and atari girl right right you played it there was no memory that's it these games were never saved yeah no absolutely and it's it's not like there's not even a checkpoint system either um you had um advent you've got adventure right Mm -hmm. yes i have that game did you ever go through and get the um the easter egg in that game oh gosh I know the Easter egg exists in there. Have I ever actually seen it pop up? Yes. Yes, I have. Really? Because that's just, that's one of those things where, like, with this is something I'm most fascinated about with video games, is how sh- how do people discover some of these things? Like in that one, going up to a particular corner of a room, finding what is called the invisible dot, then going straight back to another room on a certain path. That must be sheer luck, right? Because if you discover that for the first time, there's no way you're going to remember exactly what you did. I, I don't know if it's like... Possibly it must have been leaked because sometimes it's just such an incredible circumstance. Okay, that that game. So you've got like these easy levels and then it gets harder and harder and harder. And then if I recall correctly, at one point you're actually in the dark and you're stumbling around and you, you're carrying a light with you. To, so you can't even see the maze walls. You're just in the dark. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to stumble upon it accidentally because you're just hitting with like everything that you, you're mm. smacking into stuff. It's and and you're asking me this, and I'm having to go through. I know I've seen it. I know it seems what it looks like. I'm almost positive I've seen it in the actual game, whether or not I stumbled upon it or knew it. I I honestly couldn't tell you. Mm. Oh, Josh, did you get into that seat? Yeah, I just sat down. I mine. swear, I literally just saw just like, I swear you just, you just <laughs> arrived from the bottom. That was amazing. <laughs> so I, <laughs> so I, um, <laughs> I, I, I sat, I like, I probably came in like this because I probably came in like that. So I realized you couldn't hear me. Oh, I, wasn't near the mic. I probably came in like that. I was, he rises up, from... <laughs> I was picking up my headphones. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> so we just so now you are you lower yourself down the cable which pro- proves dis uh, sorry proves disappointingly short you are hanging about five meters above a dark alley within arc enterprises and i think chris you mentioned this off off mic this is the perfect cliffhanger to leave the listeners at because <laughs> hey, bond's but... literally hanging five meters above arc enterprises <laughs> uh, we've been going for a while now let's 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 shelve this maybe we'll come back to it maybe we won't but this was a lot of fun for me just to kind of like go through this it, it's not text-based adventures are tough and you have to have a specific mindset going into it but what makes it more fun is hanging out with people and just kind of making fun of it as you go along yeah. so uh, before we wrap up, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Did you, uh, would you, I guess two part, two questions. One, would you play this on your own? Or two, would you play, would you come back to play this again on the podcast just to rip, just to rip it and make fun of it? <laughs> I would definitely come back to rip it. <laughs> <laughs> Playing this on your own, you know, that, that's a really interesting question because I feel like, Whoever the developer, the writer, I know you said, uh, I think Benson wrote this. If you're having fun with it, like the whole, um, you know, typing in certain prompts, like when we were joking around saying like, kiss Goldfinger, <laughs> that's, like, that's, the, uh, that's an awesome opportunity to actually write that in and be like, you know, Goldfinger comes up with some type of quippy comeback when Bond like tries to make a pass at him or something like that. Goldfinger passionately embraces Bond. <laughs> like 
you could have. We have all the so time in the world, much... Mr. Bond. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, uh, those, uh, to, for those Bond fans, know we'll get that reference. <laughs> but I mean, you could really have a lot of fun with that, or you know. Um, but unfortunately, it gets really frustrating when you try to type in some of these commands and just get nothing. Um, and that's where I feel like uh, the frustration comes. And then also, you know, it's you have to choose these ways in this exact order. Like we learned, uh, you have to hit the gray button at this moment. Otherwise, you get captured. How many times you would have to play this over and over again and like have a notebook keeping track of everything you've done? Oh, mm -hmm. it would just get so frustrating. And then think about it. Correct me if I'm wrong. You so if you get up close to the tail end of the game and you fail, wouldn't you then have to start back all the way at the beginning and go through yep. all of these prompts because you you're <laughs> not saving the game? That would be the most mad. I well, I can't there, imagine putting this through the entire game. I can't imagine. Well, you know what? Let me try something real quick. Um, there yeah. is a save game option on here. I don't know how it works though. Yeah, so I can type in the command prop, save game. Would you like to save this game? I can hit Y. Okay. Yeah. You problem. would have to you would have to do that so many times because the thought of going back to the beginning and going through all of these prompts would just you know, and keep in mind now I'm an Atari girl. Our games had no memory. <laughs> so if you die, you're starting at the beginning all over again yep and it well it gets like this one isn't so bad it does have so it lets you save between three like nine different slots one through nine um most likely since i'm doing this on a website it's not going to save our game at all yeah. which is which yeah. is fine because if we decide to do this again i can literally get right back up to the exact same spot so that's not an issue and then i'll save it there so that way when we inevitably die i can just load the game right from that point again that'll actually i don't know why i haven't yeah. been doing that this whole time actually i feel like i just wasted like an hour and a half of our time um, yeah. <laughs> i wouldn't pull that up <laughs> i just noted i just thought about this now i apologize to you and yours this holiday season oh um, no it's way more fun backtracking <laughs> driving driving around throwing the car in reverse like you just said went, chris <laughs> we went for a leisurely drive around the Alps, you know. <laughs> that's, that's what it was. <laughs> for me personally, I could see playing with this with other people, sitting down, making an evening of it, and be like, okay, this is going to be arduous, but we can get through this. Let's order a pizza. Let's get some beer. Um, I think, yeah, playing it by yourself, at the end of it, you'd be like, oh. <laughs> like, that wouldn't be the satisfaction of finishing a game. So that's why I'd take it. And <laughs> yeah, I'd love to come back and rip this on the podcast. <laughs> I want to finish it now. I want to see what the ending is. <laughs> oh my gosh! Because <laughs> it, it the, I mean, who knows what it would be after all of our shenanigans going through this? Uh, but okay, idea, could you imagine? Uh, so that's it for this episode. Where can the good people find you online? Um, I am at Burb James Burb. That's B I R B. Period. James B I R B. Uh, that's on Instagram and. Uh, Burb is also on Twitter, though he doesn't tweet very much. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you can find me on Instagram, the uh, James Bond parody. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, what about you, Chris? And, uh, I'm Instagram as well, Instagram only, uh, British Bond Addict. Um, that's how you can find me. I'm, you can tell it's me because there's an unashamedly huge Union Jack in the profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, as for me you can follow me on facebook twitter and instagram at still loading pod on all of them you can email me at still loading contact at gmail.com if you want to support the show you can do that in a few different ways go give it a five-star rating and review on apple Podcasts or whichever podcasting app you use and uh, if you want to support it monetarily you can go to patreon.com slash still loading pod even just a dollar a month will help grow the show and the most important shout out I have is the Bit by Bit Foundation. The Bit by Bit Foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to put video games and video game consoles in the hands of children receiving inpatient care at hospitals. So if you want to go support them, go to bitbybitfoundation.org and consider donating. And that will do it for this episode. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. This was a lot of fun for me. I hope you all had fun listening. 
uh, Chris and Mel, thank you so much for joining me for this episode. No, thanks <laughs> thank for having us on. It's been a blast. And I will see you all next time. Thank you.